Okay, we're back with The Real Deal Tirana. Uh, this episode, we are gonna tackle the engine bay. So we've had it sitting in place. We discovered it's sitting too high and offset. So we'll have to tackle that, get it cut up, and get it in position. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna send the engines to the machine shop. They'll get the adapter drawn up, we'll get that power glide in, and then we'll hopefully slide it back in position. Okay, I thought I'd just show you guys the issues we're running into. So we spoke about it being too high and offset. This is all caused by this dry sump. So just poke your, your head in here and have a look. The sump's offset, so it all comes to the left side of the vehicle. As you can see, the uh, fitting slamming into the cross member, engine mounts are in the issues. So we'll get it out, we'll do some mods, um, and hopefully jam it back in with the power glide on it. Okay, so we've got the engine out. I've sent it to the machine shop, so they're starting to draw the back of the engine up. I've been doing some more measurements about trying to get this uh, this engine low enough uh, where we're happy with it, and it looks like the main cross member is going to come out. So if you just have a quick look at the cross member, our big concern we've got at the moment is the rack is actually mounted off the cross member. So I've just thrown a bit of a blue line across here and across there as well. That center section's got to go. Um, so what we're going to do is, my worry is we cut that out, the, chass the chassis might want to you know, fold in a bit. So I'm going to remove this uh, the rack itself. Uh, probably blow them rack brackets off. Then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a bit of a two for one deal here. So I'm going to replace the rack with a bit of tube here. So we're going to get up in them scallops, up under here, these holes here, get that welded in position. So one, that'll hold the rails apart from folding in under pressure, and two, that'll act like the rack. So hopefully we get that sitting in there, then we'll bring the engine back over, um, drop it down, and hopefully we've got the engine down about 80 mil. That's what we're aiming for. So stay tuned, I'll get the gas axe out, we'll blow some holes, and uh, we'll go for there. It's never easy cutting up a, uh, a complete car, uh, but we are put the V12 in it, so sacrifices need to be made. Now, I put the brace in like we spoke about, so to me, the chassis rails didn't move, we haven't measured up yet, but that's out. It's only a rough cut, we will have to obviously take more out, but little bits at a time. Um, so we'll get the engine back in the machine shop when the boys are done. We'll slip it in, and hopefully that dry sump will clear that, uh, what, that cross member while what's, what's left of it, so stay tuned. So the engine's made its way over to the machine shop. They're manually getting some measurements off the back of the uh, back of the engine. Um, they've made a little bit of a locator off the center line of the crank, pretty smart, so they can measure out each of the studs. It definitely isn't going to plan. Um, they've worked out that it's fully not symmetrical. So it's gonna take a bit of time getting all the increments and stuff. So if you have a look, I did mention it's probably a bit above my pay grade. There's a fair bit going on on that sheet. Um, so they're working here and then transferring it over to, uh, to CAD. So, i have got all that drawn up, and then I think what we'll do is we'll physically drill it up a uh, steel pattern just to make sure it locates nice. And once we get happy with that, we'll uh, get the center line again, and we'll transfer that into a proper adapter plate, which will have that power glide pattern on the outside. So stay tuned, uh, more update, updates coming. Okay, so we've moved the car from the concrete surface over there into the air. Um, it probably hasn't gone to plan 100% yet, so that dry sump is still causing us a lot of issues, especially on this uh, left-hand side. The right-hand sides are really good, but the left-hand side, we're still banging into this lower control arm pivot point. So we've made the decision we're gonna have to drop the suspension out um, and redesign a few things. So a little plan is where this lower pin goes to the lower control arm, we're gonna uh, get that removed and we're gonna relocate it over here somewhere. Um, obviously, you can't just do one side of the car, so we'll have to duplicate on the other side of the car. So. I'm gonna get this out of the way, get, uh, get cutting it and get back into it. I just noticed one thing, we definitely can't leave that black uh, caliper on there. So I think we'll go to a Willwood red six piston caliper. Um, that will tie in really nice with that red cover. So that will go, we'll get some reds on there. Uh, it'll look pretty trick. Okay, so we've got the wheels off. We've undone the coilovers to get the weight off the arms. We've released the lower control arm and let them hang down. I wanna leave it all sort of hanging because there's gonna be a lot of up, down, up, down checking things. Um, I think I've come up with an area for the lower control arm. So in my hand, I've got a new lower control arm pin. So if you have a look on this cross member, I believe, well, I'm hoping this is about the location of the new lower arm. So we've lowered it and we've also moved away. So this is the side with all the issues, that dry sump. So looking at this here, we're gonna gain probably 50 mil or two inches. Um, 
On the other side here, I've sort of marked out without the texting line. So this is gonna be our main cut. So all this material is gonna go. This center line here is where the new pin is gonna locate. Um, so we probably will have to shorten the lower control arm up. Otherwise, we're gonna end up with the wheel hanging out like that at the bottom. So the other thing to keep mindful, there's a lot of weight on this lower arm. Um, stick your camera up in here and have a look under here. There's a couple of gussets which are tied into this lower control arm pin. So we'll do the same. We'll get all that material out of the way. This will go in. Why that cross member is open will lay nice well across there as well. That'll take place. And then we'll get that lower control arm back. And we probably won't shorten them up straight away. We'll see how it looks. We might get away with adjusting the upper arm um, because we are gonna put the airbags back in there. That's a big thing to, to talk about here. So the coilovers will not be going back in there. I spoke about a couple of episodes ago that I wanted to get the airbags back in for a cruiser. So that is a must. So. We'll get the bags back in and we'll let it down at full droop, check how these arms work. If not, we'll fab some new arms and we should be good to go. Throw small pieces of the time will work. That was a real pain in the butt, but it's there for a reason. I think everyone can understand there's an outside skin, there's an inner skin, so the strength is absolutely amazing. Um, which obviously we'll duplicate that, so I think that was the worst side. It's been a drama since we started putting the Ferrari engine in. Uh, that dry sub's causing them issues, so. All I've got to do now on that side there is just trim the inner gussets, which is obviously these ones here, up in there for that, allow that pin to, so we can fully weld that pin in, so. Um, it's Friday night, I've just about had enough, so I might come in tomorrow and finish trimming that and we'll get the pin slid in, get that lower arm mounted and uh, I should be pretty happy. Okay, so we're back. Um, I did come in on the weekend and made a couple of uh, adjustments and got this lower arm pin in position. So it's only tacked in because I was always taught as an apprentice, you have anything to tack and it's very simple to take out. So I've got it sitting in there. Um, I've just put a couple of tacks here, there and everywhere. Um, I also went ahead and cut a plate, which is gonna eventually go like this, just to give you a bit of an idea what it's gonna look like. So this will sit like this. And then what the plan is, once we get all this obviously welded up and cleaned up around the outside, we'll also run a nice TIG weld across here. And also underneath could be a nice TIG weld as well. So what I wanted to show you is I've got the lower arm obviously mounted. Um, we spoke about before that we're gonna get the pin down and across, which we have done which has caused a drama, which we probably knew what was gonna happen. But if you bring the camera and look front on with that wheel, it looks a bit like uh, Tokyo Drift. So what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna shorten that lower control arm up to get that lower arm back in. So down on the ground, I've got the opposite side sitting here. So here's the lower arm pin that's gonna go on the other side. And here's the arm. Um, obviously this sits here. There's normally a steel washer either side, but we're gonna to have to shorten the arm up. So as you can see, this arm tapers. So as you can imagine, as we bring that pin down, there's gonna be some drama. So the lower arm pin's there. The back side of it will probably have to trim down, obviously because of the taper of the arm. So I'm gonna send the lower arm pin, the lower arm itself, up to the guys in the welding bay. They will do some modifications. Probably just tack it up for me. Then we'll jam that back in. Um, and then we'll check the other side and make sure we're happy with the wheel. Then we'll pull that side apart and repeat. So stay tuned. All right, so the boys have done the modification to the lower arm. So we took that 25 mil out and shortened it up. I also shortened the, the lower control arm pin up, we put that in. Also while I was going, I removed the coil over out because we're no longer gonna be running them. I thought we'd slip the airbag in. So as you can see, the diameter difference in, in the bag to the coil over is pretty dramatic. Um, see that there. So I put them back in. I was pretty confident they're gonna fit because we did run them at one point. But because we've changed the suspension around, I thought I'd put them in there and quickly just double check to make sure the clearance is also pretty good. So where it's sitting now, that's fully sacked out. So that's air out of the system. We had to put a few bits of timber under there because it would have uh, bottomed out on the hoist. So we'll bring it back up. I'll show you what they've done with the control arm and I'll show you what we're going to move on to the other side. So let's bring it up and we'll have a quick look. So we're back up in the air. 
this would be with full air in the bags um, and clearance is really good so in the spring pocket um, where the coilover was the airbag sitting there it's got nice clearance it's probably got 10 to 15 mil all the way around um, that's fully pumped up which is good so like we spoke about before they took the modification out of this arm here and we've just tacked it up because we weren't sure 100% how it would be so that's tacked in i'm pretty happy um, i think it's the point we probably need to do the other side and then the suspension set so we're not fully going to go ahead and fully weld it up and all that kind of stuff we'll just leave it like this the next step we'll probably be trying to get that engine back in um, get some engine mounts sorted make sure that dry sump clears and obviously that rack is going to have to get in there somewhere too so I'll uh, go ahead, pull this arm off, get it modded, and go from there. Okay, so we've got the engine uh, sitting back in position. So we've made a bit of a jig just to hold it there so it's safe and sturdy. Um, dry sump is still a little bit tight, so just poke the camera up in here and have a look down up in here. You can still see it's, um, it's touching, so I might have to do a couple more mods there. But the best news about this is I've discovered, this is the rack location on this uh, sturdy bit of timber I've got here. So this is where originally we're sitting with the car with the uh, other cross member in it. So the best news is this sump that is cut out, I've got plenty of room. Um, we reckon we come around down uh, 50 mil, which is two inches. And the best bit about that is if you come around here, we'll have like a double win. So this sump, all these issues it's causing is this uh, fitting that comes in the pan here. So if we can bring the whole engine down another 50 mil, we'll be able to get one of our fittings underneath that. So we've had a big win in one way, uh, but a couple more modifications yet. So. I'll come back down, um, we'll probably get the engine back on the engine crane, try and come down 50 mil, secure it again, get back up, and if we're happy there, we'll work on get that rack uh, in position, so. Okay, so we've got the engine back in position. We were lucky enough to get it down 55 mil, so just over two inches. Uh, we spoke about that fitting on the opposite side and it's worked out perfect. So I'll have a quick look at that first. The whole way through, this has been the drama. So I poke that up in there, you can see this fitting here is now clearing. So we'll get a uh, 90 degree fitting come out there and we'll go straight to the dry sump. That's one thing we achieved. The second thing we went ahead and did was a set of engine mounts. So up in there, obviously they're only tacked in position, but that will be the product when it's all welded. So at the moment, I'm pretty confident where the engine is sitting with that dry line angle. So I've got a dry line angle of three and a half degrees. Um, I think that's gonna be the home for this engine. Um, we've also brought the rack up in position so this is where the rack was originally for the front end um, of our measurements. So, and we're clearing, we're in the, in the sump like we spoke at, which is really good. We do have to modify that rack. Um, being that we've modified the cross member and moved them lower arm pivot points out, obviously if we leave the steering uh, pivot points on the rack different to the uh, lower control arm pivot point, we're gonna have bump steer. So once I get all that done, I will send the rack up to the front end guys. Now either make me a new rack or modify that rack. So we've got no bump steer, because that will be a big thing. In the meantime, I've been tinkering around last night. I've gone ahead and made this. So, this little bracket here is gonna act like a few things. Um, one, it's gonna be our rack support. So I'm gonna to have to make some rack brackets to come off this. I will put this in position in a second, show you what it's gonna do. Two, it's gonna act like a bash plate. Um, there's nothing under that sump. And we obviously don't want to go over um, a speed bump or something on the road that's going to smash our sump out of the way because I don't really want to buy another Ferrari sump. So that's going to do that as well. And the third thing it's going to do is actually going to tie our rails back together. So it's a bit of a three in one deal there. So I was going to put it up and try and explain to you how it's going to work because at the moment it's just a big chunk of steel bent up. So I'll try and slide it up there and show you what's going on here. So if you come around behind me with that camera and look at the sump, you can see that I've still got a nice gap um, underneath the sump. So we've got the 10 mil. So it's gonna be the lowest point under that sump. So if we do unfortunately run over something, it should slide over this plate. Um, two, it's obviously gonna uh, hold the wrap up we spoke about and it's gonna hold the front end together. So that will be our lowest point. Um, it is still about five mil higher in our chassis rail. So nothing is still hanging down from this. So. Like I said, that is the home for the engine. I'm going to go ahead and get this tacked in position, get the rack brackets on there, and then we'll, uh, we'll take it down and have a look at the bonnet and all the other stuff. So yeah, we'll rip into it. Okay, so I've gone ahead and finalized my bottom cross member. So as you can see, the rack brackets are all installed. Um, so that is pretty much a finished product out of the car. 
The next step with this is probably to go get the sandblast and so forth, because when I fit this, it will be the final time it goes in. Um, I'm pretty stoked how it come up. It's definitely heavy duty, but obviously it has to be. Um, we spoke about, obviously, we're confident that's where the engine was gonna sit. So I've made the decision, the engine's not gonna move. Uh, if you come up the top here, I've started playing around with some bonnet clearance um, designs and ideas, because this bonnet here was obviously cut out around my big block shed, uh, which had a big mag drive at the back and 1471 below us. So this bonnet will not work with this engine. Uh, but now we've got the engine down, I'm starting to give a bit of an idea of what we can go with. I, I will have to go get another bonnet, but I did start taping it up to get an idea. Uh, but one thing with this Tirana bonnet is you'll notice that it's got a bulge through here. So obviously this tape is, this tape is sagging. Uh, I've given it a bit of an idea. It's gonna be something like this. So you can see there's a bit of a, bit of a gap here. A uh, couple of concepts I'm trying to work on maybe will be just showing the center bit or coming out to here. But like I said, keep him on that bulge. This thing could run through like this if we really did want it to. Um, so the next job is probably get it, one of my spare bonnets out of storage, uh, get it on there, start trimming um, and get that nice cut. So that's gonna be that. I do want to touch base on the adapter plate. Um, the reason we didn't get the gearbox mates to that, we discovered there is a trigger that runs off the flywheel from a factory Ferrari setup. So we've gone ahead and got the original flywheel of this uh, engine ordered. So that's on its way. When that gets here, we'll have another look because we don't want to go to this effort, make an adapter plate and then discover something's failing. So hopefully I'll get there in the next couple of days. And in the next episode, we can finalize an adapter plate, get that transmission up against it and put the whole lot in as one. Um, the other thing is, I've gone ahead and changed my hat. So jump onto our uh, Rod Shop site. There's some brand new merch on there. Um, click, buy now. And the big thing is, subscribe, keep watching the channel. I'm hoping this thing will be on the road before we know it.